people like to play Xbox yeah. and do that. Like that's their like game for when they go home. Mm. For me, my game is to go home and jump on Logic and make some dirty basses and yeah. some banging like drums and just yeah. have fun. Do you know what I mean? If any, if any platform was to embody the kind of people that, that I and I I want to be present on a platform like this, it's you. You are the you are to me an embodiment of street culture, and the fact that you've gone so far as I'm doing that for for the culture. Yeah, well, that's you know what I mean? it is. I just bro, it's just I complete. It's just complete because that's what I love. Killer Killer podcast. Killer Killer official dot com. Street culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast. Here we go again. It's that time. It's getting warmer out there as well, which is nice. I like all of that. Transmitting live central London or central as you need to be um, in UK. Big shout out to all the international. Hold tight to everyone that's been supporting the podcast from the jump. Um, and anyone's got a television app as well, free download, iPhone, Android, uh, for your street culture, sports, where it's Mini Docs, Big Docs, the DJ Mixes, or the Notorious podcast that you love um, inside the house. We've got new breed, new breed of drum and bass coming through. Hard the culture is in safe hands. Drum and bass, DJ, Supremo, the might, oh, and Graph Wright as well. Japper inside the place. <laughs> My God, how are you doing? I'm good. You're passing through, innit? So, you know, yeah. just on your casual way to, to Bristol as you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Got to play tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a good night out playing uh, Attic Bar, headlining that. Headlining? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Bruv. I feel like I'm late to the part. I mean, we met in different circumstances, you understand, in, in the world of graffiti, didn't we? Um, mm, we met at uh, VIP. That's right, at VIP. Yeah. Hold tight, Billy. Um, I love it when artists... They're into the mixed genre of the street culture world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and Japper, that doesn't sound like a normal DMB name anyway. So you clearly define, you cut your chops on different areas of the street world, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think so. Like, to be honest with you, um, it all goes in, because like for me, I was going to skate park from when I was like, 12, 13 years old, just like love BMX, skateboarding, just like that sort of culture, street mm. culture, since I've been like a little one. Little one. And yeah, even my dad, my uncle, they were both, they were both riding like fucking, uh, sorry, can you? <laughs> you can swear all you like, mate. All right, it's sweet, your podcast, mate. <laughs> do you please? Sweet, yeah, yeah, literally. So um, they were all riding like Harrow, um, Harrow Skate Park like 30 odd years ago. Do you know what I mean? With that old school skate old ball BMX is like no fucking yeah way. so my dad like got me on it young and then um yeah just being around that sort of culture just seeing like graffiti going to raves listening to, going to the skate park just the whole vibe of a skate park and getting like your friends and then going to the raves and mm. that's how it all kind of happened really it's a cycle isn't it yeah man excuse a pun obviously skate parks come on um but I've what what I find interesting about you is it's almost like you've come up f just so quickly. I mean, there's definitely a new wave of interest in jungle and drum and bass, but you've you've you kind of you grew you you moved in silence and all of a sudden bang, like you're there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I think I was moving in the shadows. Oh. <laughs> Mm. Not in silence, exactly. you know what I mean? Like That's more, what I'm more saying. in the shadows, like yeah, like I just like ninja, yeah, like, chatting to everyone, just doing what, just like having fun, going out to raves, just communicating with mm. people that I love, showing love to the people that I respect a lot, mm. like obviously like all the artists that I look up to. Who 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 you know who did you um, you literally by? everyone uh, like R Randall, Brian G, mm. Ray Keith. Um, yeah, just all all the legends, really. The legends, like Goldie, bruv. fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. Skibber, obviously the Skibber, R.I.P. R.I.P. Skibber, R.I.P. Fats, hype. R.I.P. Fats, big up hype, big up hype. Yeah, legend. Um, 
yeah, just it's just crazy because like for me, I was just a kid going to raves, having mm. fun, like just doing DJing because I love it, and then it kind of turned into a career because I was good at it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I was DJing first, and then I thought. Because I can play like guitar, bass, drums. I can play instruments. I've always been like musically inclined. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop it. That's awesome. Yeah, since I've been young, like I've always played instruments. I've always been on music. I love music. Like music is my life, really. Like not just all genres. Mm. Like I I, I listen to all genres of music. That's what I mean. Mm. So it's like. How do you define that? What's that? What makes us? Want to do it so much? Where's that bug come from with music? Full stop. What? Where is that? Where's that? Where's it come from? I feel like you just like have it. I guess if you got it, if you, like yeah. I guess if you got it, you got it. Like when I was younger, like um, my mom gave me a Guns and Roses CD when I was like probably about. Like <laughs> come eight or on, nine. my guy! Come on, my yeah. guy! Jesus. Fucking GNR, what appetite for destruction? Yeah, it's got literally, be. and yeah. um, all the like, and I was like listening to all these people, and then I just just like, this is sick. Like I want, and then I mm. taught myself, like went onto YouTube, mm. was like, got got guitar, my like got guitars or whatever. I like, taught myself. So like, how old were you that time then? I was young. I was probably about like ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. So what you just went on YouTube, just started clocking. Yeah, just how typing like how to how to play like how to play instruments basically. Whoa. Like it, you know, like tutorials on yeah. YouTube and that. And then um, yeah, just start like, taught myself that way. And then um, that's why I, I never really thought I was gonna be. Like I, I always loved music, and I always like thought that that was gonna be my thing. But like it just seems like a mad thing to actually ha- like be the one do you know what i mean uh, one as in like the one job you have yeah 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 well djing holds a different kind of course doesn't it compared to you know what i mean yeah what well, i mean di- like not even dj that like, what because i'm a pro- i'm a producer like i'm with label everything it's all like it's all in one thing it allows yeah, you to grow yeah. and move quick but with the DJing, like, you can be doing every weekend without that kind of tour pattern that bands have to have. You know, release an album, do a tour, release an album, do a tour. That like, still plays in those genres, doesn't it? Yeah. So, like, I was just literally um, just on music from young. Just loved music, basically. Mm. And then when I was 16, I got a pair of... Um, I got a controller, I was like, to my... I went, so I started going to squat raves. Mm. So I was like, I want to, and when I went to squat raves, I was like, right, I want to start DJing now because I was playing the instruments. Mm. Then I seen that, I was like, right, I want to start DJing now. <laughs> so I was listening to all, I was listening to obviously all of that. This is when I was more like listening to, I was listening to Jungle, but I was also listening to like proper jump up as well. Mm. Like old school jump up like Looney, like Alpha, or like them the sorts of guys. Comment below at like you don't day, know. Like, Come low, on. Low down deep, like all that, like. Yeah. And then, Heavy. um yeah. And then like, like Rodeo, like proper, proper jump up back in the day. And then um I merged it with the jungle kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I, I just love to like do that blend, you know? Yeah. And um then I thought, I can do this myself, like, so mm. I was at college and um, I was doing graphic design, I was in my last, like, just basically just at college, just doing what you do, like, I was just meeting my mates, smoking zoots Spending whatever, more than you need. Yeah, yeah, just not even, like, paying attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last bit, of, like, last few months, <laughs> I was like, right, actually, what, I want to go to do Point Blank now, I want to go to uni, so I need to pattern up, so I am... Um, sent them my SoundCloud and sent them like all the stuff that I'd done and I got into point blank based off the fact that my like mixes are doing so well and what I'd done nice. already. Nice, wow, okay. Like, and like, so I got into point blank then and then, um, yeah, so I'd done my like degree uh, music production sound engineering just like that's when I like properly kind of like started diving into the like 
deeper mm. parts of music, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Learning about, like, the legends and how they do it and analog and different styles and how like like different ways of kind of going about making music and like except do you know do you know what I mean? Of course I do, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's there's depths to it. The kind of depths that a lot of people well the the, the innocent bystander of music, they don't hear the levels of depth. It's almost like you've got to research, learn them ten thousand hours for you to come up with these ideas, but when you hear it, it seems so it seems so natural to the ear and obvious and in tune with everything else that's out there. But yeah. it takes that it takes that time. It takes that you know, years of development, doesn't it? That's it. Like I feel like the years of development were in my brain already and like it just came naturally to me. Like it just kinda clicked. Like just kinda kinda a big one as well, my cousin. So um I've got an older cousin called Frostbite. And he's a frostbite. Big up frostbite. Yeah. He's a videographer now, but he was a sound engineer, and he was doing like sound engineering for loads of different people, like big big names. Oh, big Doms. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in the band world. Nah, just nah in the rap game, like really? like li- yeah, proper like um like literally like doing like Gets, Devlin, like all them lot. It's fucking and, sick. And um, he was just always getting me in the studio then and then I started doing that studio sessions for people and then like started like covering sessions and doing like bit little bits and bobs and like learning how to be like an engineer and like being in the studio and learning how like to create a track. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's not like just one thing, it's like work together, all have like a play and a part in it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all syncopation, all yeah. moving and the, the frequency the spectrum in which instruments are placed. But you must have had an idea of that being into like drums and bass and guitar and being able to, you know, the the the, the, the audio personnel there, like Yeah, 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 of course. It's like samples as well is a big part. Like I I'll listen to a tune that I love mm. and then like it's just like certain things that just like just go through my head on a loop. You know them ones and you're just like, oh, nah, I need to do something with this. Fucking like whole, hell, hole from hell, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just like <laughs> um, stuff like that and just sampling and, and manipulating samples and making it sound like grabbing a sample, but then not just having that sample, grabbing it and then making it your own and mm. like really like changing it. So like some of mine don't even know that you've even used that sample. Yeah. But, like, do you know what I mean? You've used it in your own way and... Twisted it up. Like, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. That's the athleticism in sample finding and, and morphing it, you know, twisting it up into something completely different. Not disguised, but just having a different take on it. Yeah. Which is incredible. Yeah, that's the beauty of sampling. Like, because there's, like, there's so much crazy samples out there and it can be used better can you please badly or can be used like mm. very well? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like it just depends how the person uses it or whatever. Like, but, um, do you reckon you can hear the, 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 the standard and age of a producer based on the way that they used samples or misused samples? It's hard to tell because like everyone's upbringing is different. Yeah. So like I grew up in an Irish family like massive Irish family, very, very, very music based. My whole family's like proper on the music. Like my uh, my nan and granddad. Well, um, so my nan was in like all of her brothers and sisters. They were all in the band together. There was like a traveling band in Ireland when they was younger. What? That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they was all like. What in a in a gypsy kind of band or, or um, just well traveling? not gypsy but like they was all pl- they was in a band together playing all over Ireland like. Yeah, and they were some eagles doing, shit. Like yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Like together. real, like proper sick, and like they all own loads of pubs. So then, when oh. our, our, my, our family's massive, yeah. so like when we link up for like big family motives, we'd all be around a campfire, and there'd be fucking twenty instruments out, and everyone just having a big old sing along. And Jaffa, what are you doing to me? This is fucking incredible. Right, question. So if they got all the pubs, does that mean they kind of create their own tours? And they go and do. They would go and do gigs in their their own pubs. 
Um, no, nah, not in that sense. It was more for just like just family family link ups. When it was like a big family like a big family link up when we all get together. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's not often because we've got such big like big families and we all get together and it's then rare, right? all, yeah and all the instruments come out we'd all be singing the songs everyone would know the lyrics everyone would be singing and like everyone is yeah it's just like yeah I love to be in your family when you got in parties that was uh, yeah it's fire it's a lot a lot of drinks big up my Irish crew done though yeah, come, come on come on, come yeah, it's on. Good vibes. yeah good vibes. all good day vibes. yeah can you only imagine and, um, wow yeah literally just grow up listening to a lot of good music really yeah. and um even like when i was like probably 11 12 years old i think my dad um showed me the notorious big movie oh, that yeah. just came out yeah, yeah, yeah. and dope. then when i watched that i was like no like, mm-hmm. big is a done is like, it done and then I, yeah i just fell in love with hip-hop like mm-hmm. fell in love with that like and big old mm-hmm. Like all those sorts of guys, and then I like dove into that, and obviously I was listening to grime mm-hmm. and like ju- like jungle, and mm-hmm. but then also listening to like acoustic music and normal music as well, like just everything. So you get like and soul, funk, yeah. everything, yeah, dancehall, yeah. like reggae. Oh, so man. you're, do you know what I mean? So you're getting it's so fucking good. when you're making music, you can take little bits from everywhere mm. and just, yeah, do what you want with it, really. That's the beauty of it. With with music, I mean, I always joke around, like, you know, when, when your work becomes your hobby, what defines your hobby is the things that you enjoy. I take pleasure out of drinking and eating. That's kind of a hobby for me. Because once your hobby becomes your work, it's like you're, you're set. You're just... But you come from a, a place of instrumentation it's it was it was as common as it was as common as um drinking water yeah well to be fair it's not even like my whole f- like i'm the only one out of my like so i've got one i've got a little brother and uh big up harry big up harry come on and i've got my mum my see dad you. big up lisa big up, and paul big up lisa and paul <laughs> don't know we see you big paul come on <laughs> and um yeah so none of them really like play instruments it's just you got the gene uh, yeah I'd, my mum just got me on it from young and I just loved it and when I was younger like my friendship group from primary school I had a best mate um called Ollie who's okay, actually Ollie. doing bits right now who goes under the name of Silk he's like doing house at, oh yo Silk man come on yeah yeah Fee Silk yeah yeah Fucking yeah big that up yes yeah he's doing bits now as yeah. well like proper and um so we like grew up together just making basically ruin bands always just making music we was on a garage band just messing about we was the kids at like school that would like i'd be on the courts playing tennis and football and mucking about but then i'd also be in the music room Mm -hmm. like just having a like just having fun. You lent your hand to everything, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're one of them whiz kids that, that they tell you about at school that he just, you know, just adapts into all environments and is able yeah, to be creative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. Like you are, you gotta have respect for everyone because obviously everyone's got their own thing. Mm. But there's an innocence to that as well. Um, when you're that way inclined in creativity, you've got to have a level of curiosity, haven't you? Yeah, hundred percent. Like I'm always thinking, always curious, always thinking about something. Like that, like my ma- my mind's just going. I- I'm gonna turn that on silent. <laughs> so like they all know he's on the killer killer podcast. That's what it is. You know what I mean? You're all pinging as you go. Yo. <laughs> yeah. Nah. So obviously, like my mind's just going 100 miles an hour when at times when I'm just like thinking about so many different ideas and it's long because like even sometimes I'll just be lying in bed and a song will come into my head and I'll be like, literally I would have wrote a song in my head and I'd be like, fucking hell, that's sick. And then How many of them do you think it. you've had? How many, how many of them do you think you've had in your, um, since you, you know, hit that level of production and DJing, like how, how often do you have them dreams? Because it must be more as it goes. Oh, all the time. Really? It's, yeah, yeah, all the time. It's not, it's not, this is not even um, like, like, tune wise this is like even just like vocals yeah. and like just like different things and 
melodies and f- stuff comes into your head. You've not got then... a dictaphone or something? Pardon? Put a dictaphone inside of your bed or... Oh, no, I, I write down... A, I, I, I always do write down notes as well. I always do write down notes, but then there's them ones where it's like, sometimes it just happens and then it just... Like, you, you're singing a little like song in your head, you're like, fucking hell, that was sick. And then, bang, and then it's just gone. Mm, but mm. Um, it's there, man. Like, literally, I just... I don't know. I just love music and live, breathe it. That's all I think about. That's what I want to do. Like, wow, you um got misses? Um not I just literally just broke up with my missus actually. Alright. Did, did she ever come across you waking up in the middle of the night like with your hand by your dictaphone <laughs> dropping something? Oh, because it, oh yeah, yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all the time. I used you to got jump. your hand on your dictaphone <laughs> again. <laughs> no, 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 I used to always be jumping out of bed and jumping in the studio. Like, really? What, yeah, so, what um, silly times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that, see, this is the sort of things. It's like, because well, I was living in Bristol for a few years. and um, We got a Bristol crew. Come on, we'll do it again. Yeah, Big up yeah. the Bristol crew. Big up the Crystal gang. So um, I was living in Bristol and literally, the, so obviously we had our room there and then I had yeah. my studio just in the corridor, like just over there. Mm. So like, as soon as I get an idea, I'm jumping out of bed and going into the studio and <laughs> yeah. all hours of the night and then going down and in the zoo. And then, but, and then she's got to get out for work and do her normal thing. And then I'm like, just kind of, yeah, just up all night. Like, because the thing is with music, you got to, do it when it comes to you. Yeah, that's the hardest part of the whole thing. Well, it's the thing with all art. Yeah. Sometimes, though, you can go, and I've found this, sometimes if you force yourself into a creative space, it actually does you the world of good. You know, even if you don't want to. Of course, there's the zeitgeist moments of being inspired and having the doors open in your mind and you're, you're away. But sometimes it's quite nice to, you know, push yourself into those environments and see how it goes, isn't it? Do you ever find that? Yeah. Def- well, I feel like I've just always just thrown myself into the music thing. Like, it's just, all I don't know, it's just, like, me. I don't know. That's your it, fun it, thing. Yeah, that is, that, is, that is just my, like, passion. Like, people like to play Xbox mm. and do that. Like, that's their, like, game for when they go home. Mm. For me... My game is to go home and jump on Logic and make some dirty basses and yeah. some banging like drums and just yeah. have fun. Do you know what I mean? I've read you say that because I was never in, really into gaming, but yeah, I always that's saw. What I've always I've always been a go like skate park, clink my mates, be outside, mm. have fun, and yeah, then, yeah. Then like when when I get home, then I'm on the music. But that's the problem because then I'm up all night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it I'm doesn't like, end, does and it? And then I'm up for work, mm. and I'm running on a few hours sleep, but it's worth it yeah. because the bangers. That's how the, that's how the bangers get made. Nothing better than getting back home from somewhere after you know you've had a late one trying to do a song, and you hear it back, and you're like, "Yeah, God, it's worth it." Thank fuck for that. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean, yeah, I literally had that the other night. Really? Yeah, yeah. I was up like I had work in like a couple hours, and I was just listening to the tune on my phone, and I was just like, "Fuck it." Yeah. yeah, yeah, doesn't matter. It's worth it. It's worth yeah, it. It's worth oh it. man, you just got me so inspired. I remember yeah. those. Th- I still get them, but it's that just such a sweet moment it, where you listen back to even some of the most rugged and rawest of demos, and you're just listening to them and you're thinking to yourself, "Yeah, I'm glad I did that. Really works. I'm fucking that is cooking. like you, you, your mind's filling in the blanks of where the production value may be a bit off, but it, the idea's there. Yeah. So for me. Um, the way I make music is not all just like I make it all in one go. Like I like to kind of start a project, then leave it for a bit and then come back to it. Mm. And then I, I might completely change it, use a little bit from that or um, maybe even have two different tracks that I'm working on and then use the drop from that. And then the intro from the other one, and think, oh, that's not working from that, that's not working. And then, mm. do you know what I mean, mash them together. Or... Does that include sound designing? Do you do, you do a bit of sound design? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I make oh. all, like, making all my bases. Make, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Pop-up. Using, like, like for obviously, Serum Massive, mm-hmm. and I've got a virus. Mm-hmm. Um, do you stick with the classic cl- plugins? Like, do you go back to some of the older ones? Because obviously, some of them are defunct, or do you keep hold of some of the older ones? 
Um, plugin, yeah, well, I've got, yeah, loads of, loads of plugins. Like, mm. plugins really, they help a lot. Like, the stock plugins that you get with, um, like, Ableton, Logic, whatever, they do the job. Yeah, but they like, do, they sometimes do. You need, like, if you want to really get that high quality sound, you've got to pay that extra and mm. stuck out stuff. It's the an- analog emulating mm. plugins that oh, man. Yeah. make the difference, really. 100%. Make it sound like um, more human, like more like real. Less robot. Yeah, that's it. That's it. More like real music. Like sensitive movements yeah. that only an analog. So you've still got an electronic thing that's like digital and crazy, but mm. it still sounds mm. like real and funky because you've got all these like analog. Like, I don't know, elements to it yeah. and stuff. Nice and warm, the warmth yeah. and yeah, yeah. The, the crusty yeah, niceness, the stuff that we love. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, Just at this point, got a big up Harry Shotter, who I've been frequenting with a lot. Big up, Harry. Yeah, block, right, block inside the house, Um, blocker, blocker. Uh, he 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 wanted to say hello, and uh, he recited the time where you guys first met doing a session. I think it was like a sit down COVID session or something. something yeah, to, tell the story, man. Yeah, so um, that was at Skibbity. Um, he put together a night at Fire and Lightbox. What well, wasn't the night? It was the day rave at Fire and Lightbox. This was the sit down party during mm. the COVID times, and he got together just all the people that he was just rating that was kind of, I guess, up and coming that he was just showing love because he was just that, that guy, he's just such a Don. He's mm-hmm. just such a G. He just really like was for the new age of talent, like the, like coming through. If he, if he saw the passion and he saw that you was actually about it, then he would really like be there for like be yeah, there. He really for, did. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I've got so much love for that guy, man. And, mm. um, Sorely missed. Yeah. Sorely missed, bro. Like we've got we've got multiple tracks that um hopefully we'll see the light of day one day. Amazing. You got tunes with Skibber? Yeah, yeah, we've got a few, but obviously um things happen, but um you never know. Yeah. But um yeah, so he basically booked me for this sit down event and put me on set with Harry Shotter. Mm. That was his first time I played with him. Yeah, and it went off. It was all recorded, and it was. You got it. Yeah, yeah. It was. I think. It, I'm pretty sure it was all recorded. I'm pretty sure it was all recorded. Oh, um, take back generation. Hold tight. <laughs> yeah, and that that just went off. Like, um, I'm playing with Harry. Obviously, he's a don. He's, he's a don, man. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah all S, big up the SES crew. Like, yeah, yeah. they're like they're literally storming. Yeah. Shabba, Skibba, Harry, that like, yeah. fantasy. Shabba, wait, come on, fantasy. Fantasy. Like, literally. Got fantasy. Yeah, all the, all the guys, man. Yeah. Wiser. Wiser, serious MC. Talk to me about the graph thing. Yeah, so, um, well, I've just always just loved, I've just loved street art, graph, since I've been, like, very young. Yeah, since I'm, because obviously going to the skate parks, there's graffiti everywhere. Mm-hmm. I've always just been looking out for it, always loved it. And, um, yeah, man, when I, uh, kind of, in the winter time, I was, I stopped BMXing as much. And then I was looking for kind of like a new hobby and I was like, oh, I'm going to get, get back on paint. Like I love, cause I, I, I've done graphic design, art, mm. all, the, all these sorts of things. And, um, yeah, so I just enjoy it, man. I just, I guess, uh, caught the bug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a fucking bug, tell me about it. Fucking so much graph around this house, you fucking throw a stick, you hit one. Um, it is, isn't it? Yeah, man, it's just a good, it's like, it's just such a, it's such a fun pastime. Mm-hmm. Like, keeps you out of trouble. Yeah, kind like of. when you're doing it, like, it's, all you're thinking about is that, and it's like, it's quick, and you're getting, like, obviously, like, if it's good, mm. then you're, like, happy with it. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, the same yeah. with making a track, it's the same with. Do anything. It's the same with like cooking a nice meal or like setting a goal, saying, Oh, I want to do a 10K run and doing that 10K run mm. or whatever. Like, it's just, yeah. Yeah, it's a vibe, isn't it? Because it's just you versus, there's no screen in front of you. You're just there by wherever you're surfacing and you're painting. There's nothing better than that, is there? It's like real removal of like fucking life and all the things that go with it, isn't it? Mm. I love that shit. It's a vibe. No, 100%, 100%, 100%. Um, 
Um, what's the future, my brother? What is the future? For me? Yeah. Um, just basically just keep on making these tunes. Keeping Hope, it on. Yeah, just keep on moving. Keep on making these tunes. I'm um, moving forward to uh, starting up. Because I've always been into fashion and uh, clothing. Like, that was what I originally, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to start my own brand before I was a DJ. So, um, like, and that's why I love, like, doing my own merch and stuff like that. So, um, and st- and also with OCC recordings, that's what I do with uh, Lupo, Tej, Objective. Oh, uh, that's the gang. And then NV's like MC. He's... You know, they'll fucking kill you if you didn't say anything on book. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the gang. That's Blowing the gang. you that's up. That's the gang. <laughs> Um, Big up all crew, come on. Yeah, so um, obviously we all like drop merch and do collabs of people and then I drop my own merch. But um, now I'm looking into a uh, project where I'm going to start my own sort of like kind of brand. Well, it's a, oh, I want to start all... It's basically a brand, but it's focused on everything, like all, cult- all sorts of culture, like graffiti, rave, skate park, culture all based into one thing. Yo, so what, you're starting a whole brand of... Yeah, yeah, this is, this is, it's in the works at the moment. So fucking sick, bro, sick. Yeah, man, it's in the works at the moment. But I've got a lot of good ideas and, um, mm. yeah, like, I just love, um, I just love, like, like, good gar, like, good garments, mm. looking fresh, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> when you're looking fresh, you go out, you feel fresh. Yep. Like, fresh and clean. Exactly. Fresh yeah. and clean, baby. Fresh and clean, baby. Fresh and clean. <laughs> yeah, because obviously, like, when you're going out and you and when you're not fresh and clean, then you're not feeling like the best. Yeah, you're not feeling done. You're not feeling exactly. done out. You're just like, exactly. oh, fuck. Um, um, yeah, so this is a thing that I'm going to start up. And um, it's going to be a brand and record label. And then, obviously, we'll do nights and... Things like that, but it's mainly it is mainly more focused on the brand and then releasing just all my favorite sorts of tunes, which is not just drum and bass, just all UK rave music, mm. whether it be garage, grime, jungle, breakbeat, just what I like, mm. and linking up different artists that I think would merge sick together, and yeah, see how it goes, but. Obviously, still doing the OTC thing as mm-hmm. well. But this is an but, exclusive. Like this is some, yeah. This is some big yeah, long yeah, game. Yeah, you just got the army. It just it's got that got the army. It's the Hennessy, baby. It's the Henny. <laughs> it's the Henny. Gave me a couple of shots of Henny, Henny and then he's just making me drop the bombs. Henny, like Henny by the plenty. Yeah. Oh. Um, if any, if any platform was to embody the kind of people that, that I and I I want to be present on. A platform like this is you. You are the you are to me an embodiment of street culture, and the fact that you've gone so far as I'm doing that for for the culture. Yeah, well, that's you know what I mean? it is. I just, bro, it's just I complete. It's just complete because that's what I love. Like, and if I can make a living off something that I love and what I like, I truly love, and I've got a good team behind me. Like, I found a really good group of solid. Because when you're out, and obviously I've got just so many good mates, uh, just so many good designers, mm. and just good fr- good friends, and we can all work together and all make money together and mm. just yeah, do it like that really. Mm-hmm. So um, survive. Yeah, the definitely. future's bright, my brother. Yeah, hopefully. Um, I think you've just got to manifest these things, man. Just stay on it. Stay on it. Shit takes a lot more work than you realize, doesn't it? It's a lot of work. I like, I mean, I done, when I, even when I was at uni, I was at uni and I was working four days a week doing mm-hmm. tarmacking mm-hmm. and groundworks. And then I was at uni doing the degree and DJing on the weekend <sighs> and still doing like that. And even now, like, I don't even mind jumping out and jumping on, doing a bit of grafting. Like, mm-hmm. still it keeps your head level. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, man. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's good that like, sit, sitting in the studio all day is just not not healthy at times. You got to mm. go out and like get in the real world and see things. And... Well, you lose the you lose the the 
energy for why you'd go into the studio in the first place it becomes a monotony, doesn't it? Mm. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, like when when you're out there and you're like, it's like even even just driving your car and you listen to the radio, you might just like I um, I would never usually just be like kind of listening to like Capital or like what, like the Kiss or yeah, yeah. some I, and then like. What do you listen to then? To be honest with you, I just listen to the music that I like, like just like grime, hip hop, like all all the music that I like, just mm. on a kind of Spotify app music yeah, stuff like that. Mm. And then my own music, m- m- mostly I just listen to like mm. my own music, really, mm-hmm. and my friends' music, mm-hmm. and um, just work on my own stuff because I'm so busy. Yeah. Like the time that I do have, I just put into my own stuff. Yeah. And, and the people that I look up to and the people that I rate. Um, tunes you're looking out for right now. Give us, give us, give us some top three tunes you're bump, banging right now. Top three tunes? Yeah. Oh. Of any genre. It's a hard one. That is a hard one. That is a hard <laughs> one. Obviously, um, got to go with B.I.G. Juicy. Because mm. it's that time of the year, isn't it? Yeah. We live on a high street all over here. It's um, like rooftops down. MJ tune. Cole, Sincere. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a banger. Yeah. And then I guess um, Mr. Majestic, okay. Calabar. Hey, see, there you go. Some new bits there for you there. Yeah, Comment below. Different, but then like, I'll listen to, yeah, everything, like all different styles. It, it's, it, it, it's what I'm in the mood for at the time. Hmm. Um. Yeah, man. He did not it anything. He's just on it. Exactly. Like when I, I was going through a big phase of listening to loads of like trap as well and like the West Coast style. Yeah, like, I rate that. Yeah, like Shoreline Mafia mm-hmm. a few years ago. Bruv. There was also this whole kind of like New York scene. What are they called? It was um, the New York Drills. Yeah. No, no. It was early. That was um. Oh, what was the name? It was two thousand and three, two thousand and four. Um, like Papoose era I forget the names of them but it was a whole genre and they don't get much shine because obviously at its time there was there was just that backlash between like the more underground hip hop and the yeah there was even that chop and screw stuff yes, as yes, well yes yes bro honestly so I used to love they, that shit yeah so they used to get the so they used to get the beats so they would mix it and then they would go on the vinyl they'd do it at half time yeah and then they'd be scratching in between bro, and doing I used it. to love yeah, that yeah, shit yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, it was oh, sick. Dude, it was I used sick. to love it. Yeah, but then in Miami, that. they were switching it up. They were going three times the speed. I remember going into like, I remember because I had a missus there at the time for about a couple of years, three years. And we used to go um, go into the hood to get the pirate radios. And the music would be, and there would be these MCs just busting it, not on a drum and bass thing, yeah. just on a real high speed Miami bass thing. So there was these genres that were being built just on tempo. Mm. Mad. It's, well, I guess that's that's how maybe new genres are start to get created. Mm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because mm. then people are speeding things up and thinking, oh, I might start just making it at this tempo now mm. and stuff like that. Do you know? Mm. It's true. Like when I remember seeing that documentary on Fab and Groove Rider, big up your boys, fucking legends. Uh, but they were saying, you know, they just literally just sped up breakbeat, like like big beat with house music yeah yeah i, I know you like, know the like I, know, I, I know the documentary talking about like um where there was original like that like miami bass yeah. the miami bass like techno and yeah. like acid house and then how it went from acid house into more like jungle break beats and then it went a bit more into that darker stuff yeah. and then yeah how it all just develops and then shit fascinates me man yeah i feel like um it's going full cycle now. Jungle's kind of coming back. And... Thank God, I love jungle. I love the jungle jump up business to jungle. Yeah, jump up as well. Jump up as well is making a very big like because yeah. for a few years people were like hating on it and that as well. Like as much like as much as I'm a roller jungle like and that, but mm. I love jump up as well and I love having that influences in there mm. because it just gets you gassed. It gets yeah. you gassed in the rave. You know, you should smack it early clips. Back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just un- unthinkable. Clips back in the day. Come on, man. Yeah, nah, but <laughs> now he's come... Bonkers. I saw him at Boomtown um, 
That was it. A few years ago, and it was probably one of my favourite sets that I've seen because it was a hundred percent clip set, and I hadn't seen him. Uh, that was, I think, that was the first time he'd probably done a set in like years and years and oh, years. You were at the right place at the right time. Um, yeah, that was when he done the um, coffee, dropped his coffee bootleg. Like I saw, like at Boomtown, and I just heard that, and I was just like, what? It's just a beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been in the studio with him a bunch of times as well. I mean, he's he's impulsive. Ding, 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 ding. Like, yeah, yeah. It, that, so I feel quick. I feel like a lot of producers are um, having loads of ideas going on at once, mm. and that's how it works. And then you might end up with loads of different ideas, and then merge these things together mm. and come up with one thing, or mm. or you might end up just having loads of ideas and leaving it and being <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I just wasted that like, 10 hours, but yeah. oh well, you've still got all this stuff. you still got it there anyway. To you've go got to look to. on the bright side, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you've got a gig to go to, yeah? Bristol's cooling. Thank you so much for joining us, my brother. Yeah. We'll have to do it again. It's, it's got to be more. And um, my DMB All-Stars yes. uh, mix Fuck would have just yeah. dropped with uh, Napes and 4K on YouTube. So, yeah, go check that out. Come on, get in. Yeah, serious business. If you don't know about Japper, get to know my guy. He's Come on. rolling in. He's rolling in with drums and bass. Come on, man. The guy's rolling in. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, my brother. Thank you, man. Yeah. Appreciate that, bruv. Big J, Japper inside the place. Graffiti writer, DJ, producer extraordinaire. Killer Killer Podcast, we're out like in was out of fashion, all right? Uh, thank you for joining us. Stay lucky. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, all right? Take care of yourselves. Peace. <laughs>